Good morning, everybody. Today, I want to talk to you about a super important message that really impacted my healing journey and seeing our little Serena, who's three now, miracle girl, um, come out of um, crazy sickness and diagnosis um, and just do everything opposite that the doctors projected. Um, and she's developing and growing and reading. She started reading before she turned three. Um, it's just absolutely miraculous to see Jesus at work in her. I mean, God gets all the glory for that. Um, today's message, I want to entitle name calling. How many of you know that if you've been called a name in grade school or even in high school, even whether it's a positive name or whether it's a negative name, it can have big effects on your life. And as you know, in the Bible, names had huge significance. There were so many accounts of God changing the name of a Bible character to basically change the purpose of their life and to change who, uh, who that person was. He turned Saul into Paul and Abram into Abraham and Sarai into Sarah. There's so many names. Um, so um, names have a huge significance in the Bible. They, ha they could um, sometimes change the entire direction of someone's life. And so you may be wondering, what does this have to do with healing? Or what does this have to do with the yourself that you're believing for healing or your child that you're believing for healing? Well, today I want to talk to you about the importance of the name that we respect, that we are in reverence to, that we are in awe of, and the name uh, that is most important in our lives. Um, so I was reading uh, in Psalm 9, and in verse 5, it says, You have destroyed the wicked. You have blotted out their name forever and ever. O enemy destructions are finished forever, and you have destroyed them, God. Even their memory has perished. And it exploded in me when I read that, that when you are looking at a diagnosis on paper, or when you are listening to a doctor say words over yourself or your child, the Bible has another report. We know we're familiar with Isaiah 53, one, where it says, whose report shall you believe? Do you believe the report of the Lord or do you believe others' reports? It could be the enemy's report. It could be your own report in your mind. It could be a doctor, a negative doctor's report. It could be uh, speculation from a family member or a friend that's trying to help, but yet they're speaking negative over your child or yourself. There's many sources of negative reports, but which report are you focusing on and has the most importance that you have the most reverence and awe for in your mind and in your life? When I read Psalm 9-5, I saw it as the blotted out the name of the diagnosis over Serena, over our daughter. And so today I want you to, to take Psalm 9-5 personally and say, Forever, O oh Lord, you have blotted out the name of that diagnosis that was spoken over me or over my child forever and ever. And their destructions are finished forever and you have destroyed them and even their memory has perished. How would you like to fast forward in your life, dream with me for a moment of when your children are grown or if you're believing for yourself later in your life and you are totally free from that sickness you uh, have experienced all the healing that Jesus paid for and you walk in freedom and or your child walks in freedom and you look back and you go, you know what? It's kind of a blurry memory. I can barely remember when when we fought against that, when when the devil attacked us. It's a distant, faint memory. Isn't that exciting? Isn't that awesome? So dream with me today uh, that my husband and I have got, have gone to that uh, period of imagination in our minds so much, even in the middle of the, the 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 hottest battle when we were up all night with her when she was between six months and ten months old, and um, even the memory of that diagnosis or that attack that came against you has perished. So that is good news. Um, I want to remind you of the name that you should always awe and reverence and respect and fear. Um, fear not the bad fear, the fear of like a country would fear their king or the people used to uh, fear angels when they saw them um, out of respect and awe and beauty and reverence. Um, it says in Ephesians 1 that Jesus is seated 
high above every name that is named in this age and that is which and that to come. So Jesus Christ has been given a name that is so high, it's above every other name, above every diagnosis, above every demon in hell, above Satan himself, above any attack that came against you, above any sickness or disease, even every symptom. And I'm talking big things like cancer. Uh, really, there's no big and small in the kingdom of God. That It's all a piece of cake for Jesus. But when you, when we as humans think of cancer as big, uh, Jesus is seated high above that name. And Jesus is also seated high above whatever you're believing for. It could be dyslexia, a reading uh, issue. It could be just a simple sensory issue that you're believing for for your child. It could be a physical feature that you want to see change. Um, uh, there is some physical features that came along with Serena's diagnosis um, that we feel are the last things to go. And so we're still standing for uh, certain things on her skin to leave. And... Uh, so there's, you know, things to us that may seem, you know, big to stand against. And then there's smaller things that we think, but really it's all the same. It's all a piece of cake for Jesus. Um, I had a vision from the Holy Spirit, especially um, in the middle of our healing journey um, is when it happened. And it so healed my heart. And I want to share it with you. I was meditating on by Jesus stripes, Serena is healed. But he was making it real to me. I think I might have been doing communion and I was holding the little cup and I was holding the piece, the cracker. And I was saying, Jesus, I remember. I remember that your body was broken for Serena. I remember that your blood, your innocent blood was shed for the remission of our sins, for us to have righteousness. But the body broken part, like I kind of paused and I was imagining you ever seen the passion of the Christ where Jesus is just being whipped mercilessly and his skin was being torn off and it was just horrible. And it's, and it's a visual that, that gets burned in your, in your subconscious and in your memory and in your imagination. And you just see Jesus taking these stripes for you for our healing. But he showed me a different vision that day. He said, Julia, that big word that the doctor said over Serena that seemed so big to you in the beginning, that word is literally carved out in letters of, of scars across Jesus's back. So that big word diagnosis that I won't even name because it doesn't deserve to be named. So think of your diagnosis, think of your child or, or whatever words have been spoken over them, um, medical words or whatever, and imagine them carved in the back of Jesus. And I saw every letter of her diagnosis carved in the back of Jesus, bleeding, torn. And it became so real in my heart that it's like Jesus bore every specific disease, every symptom. We don't have to, to settle for anything less than what than everything Jesus paid for. And so imagine that today. Imagine the exact letters of that diagnosis. Anything negative spoken over you or your child covered on the back of Jesus. Um, I want to share an important quote to you that Mark Hankins, who's an awesome faith preacher, um, he said something in his joy series that just floored me. He said, the devil and doctors and sickness are used to being respected and awed and reverenced. Uh, they are used to getting serious attention. The devil bad doctor's reports, sickness and disease, especially uh, people that use the names of sickness and diseases, they get serious attention. They get so much respect. How much more should Jesus's name be get respect, all reverence and uh, attention in our lives? So, so what names are we most uh, giving, giving awe to, giving, giving respect and, and worship to? And Cecil Paxson, another faith preacher, spoke at um, Karis's healing school, and he spoke and said another awesome line. You, it, he noticed when he was praying over someone to be healed, he said, you've given sickness in your life too much attention. So you need to laugh at it, you need to mock it, and you need to ridicule it. And so um, that was just awesome. It just really spoke to me that 
you know, some people get it opposite. Like we give all the respect and all of the research and awe and, and, uh, wonder to the disease and, and, and looking it up on the internet and no shame and no guilt if you've done this, but literally to change our entire focus to the one that destroyed all sickness and disease on his back and on the cross, Jesus Christ. His name is above every other name. And then another scripture that talks about your enemies and diagnosis is demise is Psalm 915. It says your enemies has sunk down in the pit in which they made. So they dug a pit for you to fall in, but they end up falling in it themselves. So imagine that diagnosis. Imagine your enemies, the devil himself, the demons in hell, whatever came against you, the sickness, the, in the net which they hid to try to trap you, their own foot is caught in it. Uh, the Lord is known by the judgment he executes. The wicked is snared in the work of their own hands. That's Psalms 915. So meditate on these verses this week. Then to counteract that, to talk about the name above every name is Isaiah 9, 6. For, for unto us a child shall be born and to, unto us a son shall be given and the government shall be upon his shoulders and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And if you read all throughout the New Testament and all throughout the Bible, Jehovah Rapha, our healer, Jehovah Jireh, our provider, Jehovah Shalom, our peace. He's all these things. That's the name we give reverence to. That's the name that should be filling our minds when we're trying to get our kids to sleep at night, when we're trying to lay our head on our pillow and go to sleep at night to just meditate on the power of his name. It says, there shall be no end to the increase of his government and of peace. He shall rule on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and uphold it with justice and righteousness from that time forward and forevermore. And um, I could just preach on that. And to end my message today, I want to end uh, basically with two little testimonies. We, we visited uh, a church a few months ago and we ran into Marin Ham's mom. Marin Ham is an amazing healing journey shared on Andrew Womack Ministries. She was healed of Lyme disease. She was healed of many mysterious illnesses that caused a lot of pain and caused her to be in a wheelchair. Marin Ham, search it, it's amazing. We ran into her parents because we recognized them from the healing journey video. And we said, hey, we love your daughter's story. And, and we just chatted with them. And it was amazing because it was like a prophetic moment that Jesus was like, this is you guys. Like Marin Ham's parents believe for healing for, for, for uh, Marin. And we were talking to the parents. And so it was like we were talking to ourselves in the future. And Ty and I were just sharing with them how impacted we were with her story and w what the mom said, um, Marin's mom told us was just so powerful. She said, you know, you're telling me about the healing journey, but that was like years and years ago. And Marin is going, you know, graduated college and going into a career and, and, uh, living a successful, full divinely healed life. And she goes, I can barely remember that when we went through that with Marin, like that's a fuzzy distant memory. And it's so, uh, confirms what we were praying to God for and, and um, uh, imagining in our minds that we were the parents of two totally healthy girls, just like Deborah McDermott says about her boys. And uh, literally that this season that we, that we fought so hard and we've, we've sought for healing and all that and realized we've already got it, we're already healed and we're walking that out. Um, and it's now become a distant fuzzy memory. And that's what, that's what Marin's hand moms told us. And do not forget one of my favorite testimonies of all, Deborah McDermott, at the end of her book, Autism Healed, she says both of her boys, they took them both at different times when they saw every symptom leave of autism after several years of standing. She said the doctors gave her new medical reports and she prints them and puts them in the back of her book. So go look at it. Go put your child's name there and say, I will also have a clear medical report. And the doctors will marvel and they will be in reverence and they will be in awe of the name that is above every name. That is Jesus Christ that healed my child. And they'll no longer have awe and reverence for that, that diagnosis that came against them. She said they called her sons neurodevelopmentally typical, normal, healthy boys. Same with my girls. Neurotypically developmental or neurodevelopmentally typical girls, normal, 
uh, the term autism no longer applies to her to her sons. They said we remove the name autism from her from from any paperwork of their boys. Does that sound familiar? God blots the name of your enemies out forever and even their memory shall perish. So be encouraged today. Seek his name, reverence and awe his name above every other name.